Hello again, everybody. This is Stanger Brook here in Puerto Vallarta with your uh, weekly video fishing report. And, um, well, this week, you know, as in every week, things are changing a little bit. We're seeing that the deep water locations of Corbettane and Obanco have been less than exciting. But that shouldn't be too surprising because water temperatures have hit the uh, 74 degree range. They've been there for about two weeks now. So uh, I don't know if that's good news or bad news. But what that's only. 74 degrees is only about four or five degrees maximum over our low temperatures or low water temperatures of the year. So what does that mean? Well, it means number one that the warm water species like the marlin, the tuna, the sailfish, the dorado, uh, they should be pulling out. And they have, for the most part, pulled out. We still have some remnants out there, so you can still catch those, but it's not going to be uh, anything like it would be in, say, uh, September, October, November. Things will slow down a little bit. That's the normal part of life. We're in December now. The water temperatures are down, so those fish are going to be pulling out. The, the flip side of that is that we come to winter fishing. We're seeing, believe it or not, striped marlin out there. Striped marlin is about 74, 75 degrees. That's very good temperature for them. They like that very much. We've got a lot of bait out there. We've got a lot of squid. And we have what we call these red tuna crabs. These red tuna crabs uh, follow the currents. And what they do is they fill their bodies with, they fill their bodies with these, um, well, they got these little sacks kind of things in their body. They're tiny. They're only about that big, about the size of maybe a half a dollar. And what they do is they fill their body, well, I shouldn't say they fill their body, but they have these little air sacks in their body that they fill with nitrogen or whatever they do inside. And they float to the top and they ride with the currents. And then what they do is they get kind of hungry or they're in a location for some reason, they let the air out and they all sink down to the bottom and they eat whatever's on the bottom. That's how they eat. So then they fill these little sackets up again, they float back up the top and they ride with the currents. So what happens when that happens? So <laughs> what happens when that happens? Uh, yellowfin tuna absolutely love these things. Uh, how they can eat something with a shell like that and just chow down on them, I don't understand it. But everything out there right now is eating them. Uh, you can't just find a Dorado out there, they're full of them. Sailfish are full of them. The ones that we have out there, the striped marlin are full of them. And if it's not full of those, they're full of these three inch squid out there. So we've got, those are the challenges that we have right now. They usually come and go with the, the cold water currents. Having said that, not a whole lot of fishing is going on out there in Corbettania or El Banco because, well, everything's moved in a little bit closer and there's cold water out there. You can still go out to Corbettania, you can do jigging. Nobody wants to jig. Nobody wants to jig. But you can still go out there, you can jig. They got Kubera snappers in the 50 pound range. You got Amberjack. You still have the possibility of uh, yellowfin tuna out there. We've been seeing a lot of spinners running around. And uh, with the yellowfin tuna, there have been Jack Ravels. Not unusual. That's kind of unusual. You don't really see that too much. But they're running with. The spinner dolphins, so you see that those are 40 pound tuna. Now they've been kind of pulling out a little bit, so it's thinning out. So if you're here locally, you want to make sure that you hit that as quickly as possible because that's going to end. And uh, El Banco, you know, there have been some striped marlin out that way, but in, in reality, the big story this week is still off Punta Namita. There seems to be a bubble out there from 2 to 12 to 13 miles. If you're at Punta Namita and you're on a boat, you want to have a heading of 330. Uh, headed about 2 to 4 miles out there, and you should be right in the middle of Fish City. The reason I call it that is because it's the only water we have in the area that's 80 degrees and it's frankly, it's, it's weird. It's been out there for about two weeks now. It shouldn't be out there any, well, I should say it shouldn't be out there any longer, but sure in the heck, it's going to last much longer. So if you're locally and you're looking to do some uh, bill fishing out there, that's where you want to go. That's where everybody's been catching all the fish off Punta Namita. And right out there, they still have Dorado, they got sailfish. And we got striped marlin. So I have a sailfish in Dorado out there this time of year. Uh, if you're out there in the area and you catch any, that's just a gift from the fish guys. So we still have it happening. We got quite a few boats going out there. Say out of 15 boats going out there. Uh, say to Punta Namita the other day, we had three come in and uh, thank God two of them were, were mine that had fish. So that's where we at. This is winter, that's what happens. Now, as you're coming in closer, right there around El Moro to the Punta Namita, which is that whole stretch right there where I was talking about the bubble. If you're over by El Moro, there's always a possibility for bear snapper, amberjack, and one doing a jiggy. Uh, as far as rooster fish go, that's usually a pretty good location. If there's any in the area, they should be there, or there probably could be some there, but it's hard to predict rooster fish. They come, they go, they follow sardines, and they'll be here in the winter, they'll be here in the summer, and water temperatures don't seem to affect them much. 
If you're local on the inside of the bay, though, if you're around Estilladera or over that Punta Negra, which is at the south end of the uh, bay there, uh, there's always rooster fish in the, in the, uh, in the wave area in there, on the beach, on the sandy beaches, just under the surf line. If you get behind the waves, you're out there cashing and kind of, well, you know, basically diamond jigs, anything shiny, uh, maybe a Rapala, a couple poppers out there. You can always have a chance that right now the rooster fish are pretty small. We'll be running five to ten pounds, but um, it's not a big deal as long as you throw them all back. It doesn't do anybody any good. Can't even eat those. They're not very good. If you're down around Los Arcos, we're still seeing Dorado. Four-hour trip the other day came in with a couple of nice, really nice Dorados. Kind of surprising. And uh, we're still having the occasional freak thing like a uh, striped marlin in the bay. But, you know, it's you, you hear about it happening, but trust me, it's not going to happen to you. So that's what the fishing is like around here. And uh, with Jack Ravel's inside the bay, everywhere, they're running anywhere from 30 to 50 pounds. People will tell me that it's trash fish. I don't believe in such a thing as trash fish. If you're having fun catching it, just throw it back if you don't want to eat it. So no fish knobs, please. And uh, you always have fun out there. So with the Benita running about 20 pounds, we've got Sierra mackerels are still running about 10 pounds. They're fantastic tasting. They're the biggest fish in the world. It's kind of like catching a trout in the ocean. Light tackle is always best, and they have an early bite, but uh, very good. And um, that's basically what's going on. I mean, they're all over the place. So Jacks, Benita. Uh, right now, we still have Dorado out there in the bay. Snapper would be coming. I heard some rumors of some big schools of fish out there, but since uh, since my guys were in the process of reeling in striped marlin, they didn't over explore that, and then they came in after that. But um, they got some big boils out there. They got some fish. So, you know, Puerto Vallarta is always in a situation where you always have fishing. You just always have good action, but you may not be, uh, you know, you're not going to catch any sailfish out there. It's, just, it's not going to happen. So we got whales out there right now, which is nice, and plenty of, uh, plenty of activity in the bay. So, you know, things haven't changed too much for the last three weeks, and these will turn into a cookie cutter report here pretty soon with Jack Spinita and, and Snappers in the bay. But for right now, you still got some action. And, um, you know, if you're in the area, get on a boat. You know, have some fun. We're still doing some shared boats here if you want to do anything like that. Eight hours, 275. Uh, that's half a Super Ponga. And, um, of course, we have a lot of other things going on, too. We can do airport transfers. We freeze fish. If you're in town, even if you don't go fishing with us, we will freeze your fish. Uh, just give us a call. It's 150 pesos a bag, which is about $7 a bag. And, uh, you know, hopefully you're not leaving at 3 o'clock in the morning, so I don't have to be here before that. But we freeze fish. We're doing the tours. we got some box lunch people. And then, of course, we've got the airport transfers. And if it's got anything to do with you coming to town or getting around, we can pretty much help you. So if you have any questions, feel free to call us. Remember, here at Masturbators, we won't jerk you around. And uh, that's pretty much what's going on this week. So feel free to give us a call. And until next week, don't forget to kiss your fish. This is Stan here in Puerto Vallarta and say we want your hero. So there you go. Hasta luego, amigos. Stay safe.